Hi, welcome to the Briones Pickleball Podcast. My name is Jordan Briones, your host, and this is the very first official Briones Pickleball Podcast 001. And today with me, I have a special announcement. My co-host, Caden Nemoff. What? Let's go. Thanks for having me, Jordan. Yeah. Um, so Caden is a teaching pro, head teaching pro at Legacy Sports, um, also known as Bell Bank Park here in Arizona. Um, and actually, Caden, we've known each other quite a while. Yeah, probably my whole life, actually. And uh, and we both ended up in Arizona. Crazy how that works, huh? So, uh, yeah, in this podcast, uh, make sure, uh, not make sure, we will make sure to let you know about all the pickleball news upcoming tournaments we'll be doing tournament recaps maybe fantasy drafts talk about that pickleball news and of course as this channel is about teaching you how to play better pickleball we will also be talking pickleball strategy and technique and things like that so make sure you stay tuned um, on every podcast and as they come out and yeah you'll be learning a lot uh with us um so yeah again like i said me and kaden met uh quite a while ago and now we are at a point where we're both teaching pickleball full time so it's pretty <laughs> cool it comes full circle um kaden what about a, just or just uh maybe a quick summary of who you are and yeah. uh yeah so uh, as uh, Jordan introduced me, my name is Caden Nemoff. Uh, I am born and raised in San Francisco, California. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Arizona weather is on a whole nother level compared to San Francisco. Um, but loving it so far. Um, it's way colder than I thought it would be, but it's okay. Um, I come from a baseball background, so just coming into pickleball, I just wanted to hit everything super hard. And uh, my goal was to just hit the back of the fence every time. And obviously now that I play pickleball professionally, it's a slightly different goal. But um, love baseball, love football, love basketball, love sports in general. Um, but I also am kind of an art geek. I love music. Um, I grew up singing. Um, right. I grew up. I, well, I, I never really had a day off as a kid. I uh, was always doing extra uh, curricular activities after school, um, but I was doing music and I was doing um, sports, I, whether it was golf or baseball. And uh, yeah, my, my dad just stumbled upon uh, pickleball because of you and your dad. Because um, obviously, you know, tennis buddies back in the day. Yeah, so fun fact, my father and his father uh play tennis back in the day and uh yeah um they knew each other growing up growing up so uh that's how we are connected uh coming coming full circle and it's really cool now uh yeah um and go ahead go no ahead. yeah no uh, it's uh it's just a it's crazy how this works i mean should i used to see you at my house growing up as a kid every day and then uh Obviously, I didn't see you for a little bit, and then, like ten years later, I was in my yeah. teenage years, and you were a man who was married and like <laughs> full on board with pickleball. And I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I was like, I can get behind this. I think honestly, once I saw you playing pickleball, that's when I was like, okay, I will consider playing pickleball. Actually, it'd be a good, just a, um, a good story. How do you remember that first time you went or? or was it with your dad or what happened? Well, yeah. So I went with my dad, but oh my God, I think my dad tried to get me to play for like three or four months before I actually went out. Um, and you know, like it was, it was the first time my dad went was like right after he had his, his surgery on his left yeah. arm and he went through the whole sickness thing. Um, so he was in pretty bad shape, but like, you know, my dad, he just, he, he is the last person to just say, Oh, I want to lay in bed and do nothing today. Um, so of course, with a banged up arm and you know a terrible mindset and mentality, he just said, oh, "Whatever, I'm going to drive to Walnut Creek today and yeah. go play some pickleball with Batong." Yeah. 
and uh, just freaking fell in love with it. And of course was just badgering me day and night about coming to play pickleball with him. And I was like, I'm in high school. I play baseball. I am not playing a sport called pickleball. Like yeah. I am not trying to get bullied here. Okay. <laughs> like don't get bullied. <laughs> exactly. You know, I was like, this name is just, it's not, it's, it's, it's not it. It's not it. And it doesn't, it doesn't attract the ladies. If you say that's I, it, that's I, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm a pickleball player, you know? Yeah. Hey guys, I, I'm a pickleball player. You know, that just doesn't sound great coming out of the mouth. But now that I play pickleball, I love the name of pickleball. I think it's super, super different and super cool. But, um, but yeah, when I went out the first time, I think was it was it in Concord or uh, no? It was Walnut Creek. It was at Rutgers Park. Okay, so Walnut Creek, California. Mm-hmm. And uh, was I there? Not there. I I want to say you were. I, I yeah, I'm pretty I, sure you were because I remember kind of like I remember my dad being like, "Oh look, Jordan, Jordan's playing over there," and you were playing with Dave Wage, and there was a there was that lefty guy. I don't remember his name, but he was pretty good. Okay. Um. And, uh, of course, like once I saw you playing, I was kind of like, okay, well, I guess this sport could be kind of cool if Jordan's playing it. And obviously I didn't get to play with you until probably like what, five or six months after. Yeah. I was, uh, actually I was the youngest probably player there. Yeah. Right? This yeah. was like what, five years ago, six years ago, maybe five years. Yeah. And then 2017, when you, when you went on the court, you were the youngest. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I was, so, I was like the kid. I, yeah. I mean, there were, there were no other kids and except for like the couple times that your dad brought Christian out. Yeah. Like, but I did, I don't think Christian was that into it. I think he was just coming out for whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it was so funny, man. Like every Saturday, I was waking up at, well, my dad was waking me up at six o'clock in the morning to drive to Walnut Creek to play pickleball. And I was usually getting kicked off the courts by Glenn Lucy and getting kicked off to go play with like 70 year old ladies. <laughs> and it was, um, oh, really? I think that was, that was like one of like the first encounters I ever had with Glenn Lucy Oh, it was just, uh, him being like, Hey buddy, I'm going to take your spot here. You can go play over there. And I was like, who the heck is this guy? And of course, like now, like, you know, love him. Now call no, him Uncle uh, Glenny. Uncle Glenny. That's right. All right. So uh so yeah, teaching full time now. Yeah. Playing on the APP and PPA. Yes, sir. Uh how many how many tournaments are you playing this year? So I have twelve lined up already. Um between APP and PPA. Okay. Um I personally I love both tours. Um so I'm really excited for this year just because this is going to be kind of my first year where I'm really going to be able to get out there more and play more tournaments. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that at a certain level, the best way to gain experience and keep getting better is to just keep playing tournaments. Yeah. Um, so for me, I obviously, I mean, I I'm trying to put in as much work as possible with, you know, playing pickleball, um, professionally, but I think right now, like, all I really want to do is just travel and play tournaments, and I'm just super excited for it. Cool, man. Yeah. That sounds like a, a good year for you coming up. Um, so, yeah, that's Kate and Nemoff again. Um, make sure you follow us on this podcast. We're going to be talking a lot of pickleball. You're not going to want to miss. You're not going to want to miss anything here, so make sure you subscribe. And, uh, yeah, let's jump right into the MLP. So. Ooh. So the MLP um, in Mesa, yep, uh, just just finished. Okay, so the recording of this video um, just finished a couple of days ago, and we have the results are in. And yeah, let's just talk a little bit about um, Major League Pickleball. We know that there are huge investors, LeBron James, uh, Tom Brady, a lot of other celebrities that are investing in the sport and to be quite honest i actually didn't follow mlp that closely um the past few years uh, i did watch some highlights but um yeah overall overall thoughts uh about mlp for you Kaden. well can i just say really quickly that the setup for mlp was incredible so i was i mean obviously i work at legacy and mlp was hosted at legacy this this last week and I mean, these guys were there like a week and a half prior 
just setting up, wow. just taking measurements, just, I mean, just making sure everything was perfect for their event. And honestly, you know, um, one thing that my dad's always taught me in life is you can't take shortcuts, you know, and if you try and make money too soon, you're going to end up failing. So for these guys to just go out there and say, oh, well, there's a chip on this court. So you know what we're, we're going to do? We're going to, we're going to fix it. We're going to, we're just going to fix it, you know, or like, we're going to find a way to fix it, you know? And like, wow. it was, it was honestly just incredible how they set everything up and got everything prepared in time for the tournament, because that's not an easy event. Like they had a lot to set up. So maybe out of all tournaments that you've ever been a part of, this is probably the, like the best, what can you call it? Organized or ran? I would say the best organized for sure. Okay. I mean, um, I mean, we've had the PPA and the APP both okay. at Legacy and I mean, they're great. You know, it's, it's, you know, never any shade, but I mean, the yeah. MLP was just on another level. Okay. Speaking of another level, um, like I said, I, I haven't been following it, following it too closely, but we will be now. Uh, my wife, Katrina actually bought us some tickets and, uh, to the MLP, Ooh. um, on Friday, I believe it was Friday. Yeah. I think it was the, uh, quarters or semis um so uh i have a very busy schedule so i wasn't even really thinking about it too much but uh showed up and i'll tell you what i was impressed oh yeah um i've never been to um uh, any pickleball tournament quite like that i would say it's very close um if you know tennis at all it's very very close to kind of college tennis the hype, there's a lot of the team atmosphere. Uh, we'll go into kind of how MLP, the formatting and everything is, but um, basically there was a draft and um, team, you know, players are picked in a, in a snake draft yep. uh, going up and, and back. And uh, yeah, it just makes it really exciting. Um, I think most tournaments, PPA, APP, all these tournaments we follow, we see pretty much the same partnerships all year yeah. uh, long. Um, and this is just a really, really nice uh, switch up and just the energy in general, okay? Um, going into this, I was blown away about how exciting it actually was. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is like, you're playing for a team, you know? It's not just you versus yourself. Yeah. You know, like I feel like in a tournament where, you know, I go play singles, you know, once I get my first loss, I'm like, ah, shoot, you know, and, it, but for a team, you get that first loss and it's like, well, shoot, I still have people that I have to play for. So yeah. I think it's super cool. Right. Like, I, I mean, as a baseball player and as like a team baseball player, you get yeah. like, I love it. I'm all for it. Yeah. It was, it was ridiculously awesome and uh yeah just format wise uh mlp there are two um two different uh not leagues but two different sides we got the right. premier and the challenger and uh 12 teams on each um they're all separated into pools and then they play to the championship and the way it's set up is uh you have to win three uh three out of four right um three out of four games. Um, and uh, they set up, uh, I think it's women's first. Right. Women's doubles. Then they go men's doubles. Yep. Then mixed doubles. Two matches of mixed doubles. And then yep. another mixed doubles. Uh, yep. doubles. And then what happens is the most exciting part, I think, of MLP is when it's tied 2-2 there, we go to a dream breaker. And uh, Kaden, why don't you explain what a dream breaker is? Ooh, it just crushes dreams but honestly I, I, it's super cool how they do it so like jordan said if it's tied 2-2 between the women's doubles men's doubles and the mixed doubles they go into a singles match so same uh same scoring same exact things go but now it's 1v1 and each player plays four points yeah. on that team and it's super cool yeah, so one thing that we see is different matchups, and you may even see women versus men. Uh, right. It's really exciting. I think uh, strategically, I think teams are going to get a little bit better at matching them up because you end up playing the same person as it goes around. Right. So let's say there's four players 
on one team, four players on another team. Num- the first player will play the first, right. second, second. And um, I think I asked somebody about how they they do their picks because they can, I think s- one team kind of, you know, picks their lineup yep. and then the other team gets to, to kind of, you know, reflect that or they get oh really so okay so i thought i thought that you have to submit a lineup and that's what goes okay well we're gonna have to definitely get some uh uh some info on that yeah but uh it's anyways it's really really exciting let's go over the winners of both sides or both uh both leagues here um so the challengers um again there's premier MLP and then there's the challenger MLP. So it all happens in the same place, but they uh, play within their leagues. And um, so the premier, that is the one where everyone has got drafted. Right. Um, And then actually the challengers, I think players from all over the country submitted um, applications to be part of it. Yep. And, uh, and they were picked that way. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Yes, so I'm going to bring up on the screen here. Um, the we'll start with the the challengers. Yeah, let's do it. Um, and here we go. We got uh, Iwa. I hope I say this right. Um, Radzikowska, uh, Rachel Summers, Pablo Tellez, and Christian Alshon. Um, this was a. Uh, I think. Their energy and everything was really good. Honestly, the ladies, I don't know too much about. I know about Christian because he started a YouTube channel, started um, vlogging and things like that. And he has done really, really well in singles against some top players. Um, Tweener King, self, <laughs> self-proclaimed. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, what do you think about the, the winning challenger team? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I actually got to see this team play a little bit, and they actually looked pretty damn good. Um, now, right before I left watching them play, yeah. I did watch Iwa miss a big serve on like 19-18. But besides that, she was playing really, really well. Um, Christian Alshon, that guy is freaking good. Yeah, That guy's really freaking good. I mean, I just played him at PPA Masters. He gave me the beat down. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a super, super high, high level tennis player. And um, I think I ho- hope to, we hope to have him on the podcast soon. But definitely, as tennis players come in, singles, um, you know, single strategy, singles, you know, they usually are very, very quick to learn the game. Um, yeah. I think his doubles game is getting better. 100%. He's still, um, I actually played with him last week. Um, he still likes to speed a lot of things up. Yeah. But when your hands are good and you're super freaking athletic, I mean, he's going to get away with it. Um, and he's, I mean, he's actually pretty deceptive too. Like he, he hides it pretty well. Yeah. Um, but I think his singles game is on another level compared to his doubles game. Yep. But his, 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 just, just his singles game. It's, it's so. Yeah, he covers a lot. Looking. Yeah, he covers a lot of court. Great yeah. ground strokes, great anticipation, super long. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how his g- doubles game develops throughout yeah. the year. What about Pablo? What do you know about him? Pablo's a beast. Um, I have I actually haven't played against him in tournament, but obviously just I've we've been at the same tournaments a few times over the last couple of years. Um, super nice guy. Um, I I honestly I hope I can. Uh, Persuade him to give me some Spanish lessons because oh, yeah. Spanish okay. is sick. <laughs> All Spanish right. is sick. But as a player, he's also just, he's a beast. He's, yeah. a, he's such a beast. Yes. He's a lefty. Um, so like playing him in singles would be super weird for me because like I would want to return down the line and it would just be to his forehand. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no, he's a, he's a stud. Yeah. So definitely a tennis player. Um, I'm almost a hundred percent sure certain same thing with, uh, Iwa and, um, I hope I'm saying that right. Rachel, I don't know too much about, but I saw both of them play, um, the women's doubles and I was thoroughly impressed. I mean, great all around game from both of them, a great defense. Um, and yeah, I just saw a lot of great things and obviously, uh, we saw the results. Yeah. So, 
Well, I mean, these uh, this team right here, I mean, including the ladies, they're going to get some hype, you know. They're going to be uh, – They're going to get picked up talk real soon. Talk of the town. Soon. Talk yeah. of the town. Okay. So um, that was – that was the challenger, and now we can look at the premier, premier MLP league, and that the four premier the Mad Drops. Okay, so what we got here? Los Angeles Mad Drops. Yeah, we got uh, Thomas Wilson, Julian Arnold, Irina Tereschenko, and Catherine Peranto. Um, so uh, I don't think it was a huge surprise. Um, well, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of talent here. Um, and there's a lot of, I don't think anyone could have really predicted the winner for sure. Um, but again, uh, what I see strong in that team, um, and honestly, let's just talk about Julian Arnold. Um, for me, MVP. He's probably MVP. the MVP. MVP. Dude played lights out this last weekend. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, lights out. The thing about Julian is, uh, Obviously, great, great singles player. Um, he's been in some finals against Ben and I think uh, maybe a couple others. Um, and his double, to be honest, his doubles game has come far, far, far along. Dude's a stud. So, um, actually, when we played him, we played him in the APP. Oh, we did. Remember? You're right. We uh, played it, uh, him and Rob Cassidy. Him, him and Rob Cassidy. Yeah. Fin final score was 10 15. We lost that one. Um, we did. We tried to come back there. But um, honestly, even his game from then, for sure, has skyrocketed to me. Another level, for sure. Another level. So yeah. um, he's definitely been working on his game. Um, I think he's in Texas, right? Or no? Am I totally off? I just see him I just see him at Dreamland playing sometimes. So maybe I just... You could him. be right. Honestly, I know he... I think actually, I think you are right. He's he he was living in San Luis Obispo oh, before okay. before kind of he really started to take pickleball to, you know, to his full time thing. But yeah. um, but Texas sounds right. I okay. think I think you're spot on. So don't that. quote me on that. But Julian again, singles mixed. Um, I mean we've actually I, I when I started to see even his improvement in mix is, is when I saw. I don't know what tournament that was, but when he was playing with Jesse Irvin. Oh, in North Carolina? Yeah, it yeah, was just, it, it was, that, that's when I think he really broke out um, and figured out the mix game because he's very aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. Thomas Wilson. Stud. It, another stud. I think his, his game is skyrocketed, honestly. Can I be honest? Go ahead. That carbon he uses, insane. CRBN. Yep. You got the new one. I think it's the 1X or 2X. Yeah. Now, I'm not um, saying that's what's making him a better player, but, yeah. I mean, obviously that uh, helps him out. Yeah, and he, he it, definitely, it he definitely him, feels comfortable with that. Fits him well. Um, Catherine, um, you know, Solid. No, no surprise there. She's a top uh, women's yeah. player in singles, doubles, mix. So she just played solid all all through all along through the MLP. I mean right. solid drops, good counters. I think she attacked at perfect times. Yeah. And and let's talk about Irina Tereshenko. You mean the goat of MLP? The goat of MLP. So um actually Irina, um so there's been five MLPs yeah. um so far and she has been on the winning team of four of them. Yeah. So it's basically four out of five championships. Um, she finds herself, uh, you know, with the right players. And I think, I honestly think, because I've seen her game, um, you know, PPAs and and APPs, and maybe it's not the right partnerships or whatever, but MLP, she steps it up. So I, I don't know what it is, but if I were a team owner, I'm trading for Irina Tereshenko. Trade. I'm trading. I, will, I, I would trade my Let, Ford Focus. Yeah. Let's. Let's, for Irina Tereshenko. Let's see some trades. Actually, as the MLP kind of develops, it'll be interesting to get into trades and right. see, see how that kind of happens. But yeah, congrats, congratulations to the Mad Drops um, at the premier level. Uh, I think that's super cool. I'm actually super stoked for the next one, uh, next MLP. We'll see if they could keep it going. Yeah. Well, uh, Drew Brees is the owner, or is one of the owners of the Mad Drops. Um, I actually saw him out there. Yeah. He's a, he's a big guy. Um, I mean, obviously, if he's a football player, you better be a big yeah. guy. But I also saw Larry Fitzgerald. Yep. Bigger guy. I mean, <laughs> that guy is huge. Yeah. So Larry from the 
Arizona Cardinals, I believe. Yeah, um, long here time wide receiver in town, and uh, I saw Gary V was out there. Yep, um, super big in the uh, you know the business entrepreneurship side. Uh, who else did any other celebs? Um, I knew, I I know there were some other celebs there. I don't know. Yeah, if I can share that. Okay. Top, top secret. All right. Top secret. Um, all right. So now let's jump into kind of, um, let's just talk about the, the format rally scoring, um, in, and kind of like the dream breaker in MLP. Cause yeah. I think it's just really exciting. Like I said, I went to this event with zero expectations because honestly I was just busy and I showed up, it was hyped. People were yelling and screaming <laughs> and, the team atmosphere again was just something on another level. Um, I had a friend uh, sitting next to me, and he actually said, "Actually, actually, like, ah, good point." But he said, "You know what? I may not go live and watch a regular like BPA or <laughs> or APP match again because you're just not going to get the same energy." It's true. It's true. Um, I mean, the team, like I said, the team event just brings something out of you. Yeah. And, and kind of like, I mean, I watch a lot of basketball, kind of like, right. you know, how people are swinging the towels, like after, I mean, especially when it gets tight, right. I mean, players right. are running on the court. It, it is, it's nuts. You got the music going. Um, but anyway, so it's rally scoring, um, for those of you, I know this is a huge controversy as well. Yeah. Um, and just a side note, I was at the uh, MLP in between matches. Um, I someone asked me to play a rec game, um, so I was I was just there. I had my paddle. Hey, I wanted to hit a little bit. So, and then they were like, uh, we we started uh, playing the game, and then it was like, oh no no no, we're playing MLP rules. Oh my god, we're here. I was like, okay, um, they like the pros, so baby. It, it was. It was, I actually never did that. Um, and I thought it was confusing, the scoring for me, mm -hmm. for like three minutes. Yeah. But after that, it, was it actually- Easy as heck, huh? It actually made sense. Um, and maybe we can talk about that in depth on another episode. But um, yeah, the rally scoring was cool. And then we played with the freeze. Yep. Um, and we'll talk about that. So yeah, so format for MLP scoring, it's rally scoring. And you actually, like re in, in regular scoring, after you score, you switch sides and go right. from your left to your right or your right to the left. The, um, um, yeah, so MLP, you stay on your side and let's say you are on the even side and you serve and you guys win the point. Um, then your partner on the odd side will serve. Yeah, on that side. So it actually eliminates switching and it keeps it very, very simple, actually. And yes, of course, the advantage, I guess we'll call it, is taken away um, from the returning team because every single, in a sense, it's taken away, but you can score every single time. Um, but what do you think? Initial, just quick thoughts about the about rally scoring. I think it's really cool, actually. Um, and even as like an instructor, like teaching the sport, like I, I can't tell you how difficult at times it is yeah. to teach regular scoring to like my beginner beginners, Yeah, you know? So I think personally, like if, if I could teach rally scoring, it yeah. would make my life so much easier. It's actually funny because a lot of people or, or players that I've kind of like, Hey, I, I want to show you this game and brought them out. It's like, I like, don't even tell them the score. Yeah. <laughs> Like just you'll get scoring later, right? What, let's just let's just play. Let me just teach you some strategy stuff, right. shot selection stuff. Um, but to your point, um, it, it actually is easier, way easier to keep track. And I just did not before MLP. I did not know that. Yeah. No, yeah. it can be a little confusing at first, but like like you said, all you need is two or three minutes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, going to that. Um, so rally scoring, um, then the dream breaker, or actually let's talk about the freeze first. So for MLP, again, um, when a team, so it's it's rally scoring to 21 points. Yep. Um, and I don't know when they switch sides. Is it at 11 or 15 or when? when I think it's happen? 11, but I think the cool thing that's, uh, the cool thing about rally scoring is is how they, once you get to 20, 
you can't yeah so you can't score a point until you serve yeah so let's say um both teams are battling it out and the score is 15 to 20 and then the uh yeah let's say the team with 15 is serving right um they serve and they lose the rally they lose the point um you know in reality they would get 21 the other team to win but um, the freeze happens when a team gets to 20 and you have to win on your serve. Right. Um, I know it could be a little confusing, but when you watch it just for a little bit, you'll understand. And then once the other team gets to 18, yeah. um, they have to win on their serve too. Yeah. So there's a little bit moving parts on, on kind of the scoring. Um, but what would you... Do you, what do you think about that, Caden? And I mean, would you change anything? I don't know if I change anything. Um, personally, I, I I look at this format, and I mean, I'm sure there's always room for adjustment, but I think it's pretty cool, um, especially with the freeze. Because once you get to 20, I mean, it can be 20 to 12, and all this other team has to do is side you out, and now it's going to be 2018. I know. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, you could go on a horrible break of just, like, not being able to score a point on your serve. Yeah, and, and we see that in pickleball a lot, right? Just yeah. regular scoring where teams side out, side out, right. side out. They can't score. So yeah. it's a huge um, – again, I think it's exciting for the fans, for the game. The game gets closer, you know. And for those of you that kind of hate that concept, you know, this game is growing. It's expanding on all sports. I think there's there's it's changing. There's it's evolving. Di- yeah, there's different uh, ways of scoring. You know, college sports versus professional sports. There's a lot of different things. Um, I actually like it. Um, I if I were to change anything, I don't know. Uh, to me, I'm the kind of guy like let's just keep it simple. <laughs> um, I think maybe just rally scoring in general. Yeah, just no freeze. Or I say. Uh, rally scoring i mean so rally scoring freeze at 20 right but no freeze for the other team they could just Ooh, catch back up really yeah it's because I, I don't know i say like you got to close it out to yeah, me yeah like if you're up 20 15 you got to close that close thing that out out um i don't know so that's just me um yeah so let's talk about uh some of the uh <laughs> the controversies that happened oh. during mlp uh, we will start with the the line call controversy. So if you didn't watch um, the MLP live or hear about it or read about it, uh, what happened there with the line call there? So it was um, it was a mixed doubles match. It was Greg Dow and Sierra Gayton Leach versus Olivia McMillan and Rob Cassidy. Okay. Um, pretty tight game. This was to go to the championship. Um, so these these matches mattered, um, but Rob Rob Cassie and whoever he was playing with, they were up, right? Uh, yes, yeah, they were. Yes, up. but there was there was one play where Rob had hit an overhead, um, and originally it was called out um, by um, by the partner, by Greg's partner, and he overruled it and ch- ended up using his challenge to see if it was in. Wait, so who used the challenge? Greg used the challenge on his own team. Okay. Basically, after his teammate yeah, called yeah. it out, he challenged it to see if it was in, and it was in, so he lost his challenge. So He basically okay, see, overruled his own team. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so. Right. Okay, so Dow was playing. Um, there was just a smash to his side. Right. Uh, and it was called out by his partner. Right, Sierra called it out. And he challenged it. Yeah, out of good sportsmanship. Out of good sportsmanship to, yeah. to question, you know, hey, right. okay. He's okay. like, I, th- I thought it was in, like, Interesting. Uh, you know what? But, like, so they, so they, he challenged it. It got overturned. They lost, a t- uh, they lost their challenge. Why didn't Rob's team just challenge that? That doesn't make any sense. Um, Because I you think, know what I mean? well, yeah. So I think, I think Greg out of just, like, good sportsmanship was like, oh, well, you know, like, I, like, I'm going to be honest here. Like, I think it was in. Um, wow. But, like. Okay. Because it was called out and they, it was already scored, like they, he challenged it for them, which is which it's really nice. And honestly, like no, I've met Greg, uh, yeah. you know, I met Greg last year in May or June. Dude's a super nice guy. Yeah, I really like Greg Dow. 
He's a really, really nice guy, but he, and well, also just a really good pickleball player as well. Yeah. But um, right after that, um, Greg hit an overhead yeah. well, that Rob called out. Okay, so I saw this this morning. Right. Um, so again, so there was an overhead that now Dow hit mm -hmm. uh, really hard. It was honestly in real time, you can't tell. Yeah. You can't tell. On the slow-mo replay, it looked in, but it can't be confirmed. Um, but anyways, what happened? Yeah, so um, one thing I actually didn't know until I watched the video was that challenges are only allowed if the team captain allows it, right? So Rob calls so, it out. Yeah, the team captain of your team. Correct. Got so it's like right. kind of like the the coach right. has to challenge. Right. Not not the team the team captain is the one that's not playing, right? Uh, uh well no, they're playing. Like like you could have a team captain oh, or, or, oh. or or like or a coach. Okay. All right. I I don't think the I don't think Rob and Michelle and uh, Spencer and Olivia's team had a coach. I think they were just oh, a team. I thought everyone had that's interesting. I don't know if everyone has a coach or not, but yeah. Yeah, go ahead. But uh, I know they had a water boy. It was Will Schaefer. Good kid. <laughs> Shout out to Will. Yeah. But um basically Greg hits his overhead. Yeah. Rob calls it out. Now, I mean, Greg was pretty upset by the call. Yeah, initial, I mean, it's initial reaction. It, it's yeah. it's a match point, right? I mean, you hit an overhead winner and they call it out. I mean Well, it wasn't their match point. They were they were creeping back up. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah right. But yeah. if I were Greg, I would have been furious. Yeah. I would have been possibly losing my mind. <laughs> Not actually, yeah. but yeah. I mean, I would have been pretty shocked. So it was close, and then they had a challenge left. Right. So they. Right. So Rob's team had a had a challenge, and basically was like, "It's out," um, but you know, like I guess I could challenge it. Right. Yeah. And you actually hear in the video that. Rob says, I'm being overruled by my by my coach and team captain. Oh, to not challenge. To not challenge. And to be honest, like I, I don't know how I feel about the whole overruling and all that, but hey, if you see a ball out in the tournament, you call it and the call stands for the most part, unless slow more replay comes in. Yeah. I mean I always tell people I think pickleball will take its next step to yep. you know, stardom is when we start to get full body, like full court camera access for lines yeah so eagle eye basically. you know what i mean yeah, yeah right i mean uh, it i mean here's the thing right is you have people who are good sports and you have people who are out there to win and here's my thing i respect both of them because you know what i love winning but i also love being a good sport and playing the game the right way yeah right so personally if it's close if i if i'm me i probably would give it to you Right. Yeah. But you also, I mean, if you're up 20 to 19, right. And you're going off of your gut and you think you see it out. Yeah. Hey, you make the call and just let whatever happens, right. happens. I don't think anyone's trying to cheat out there. I think yeah. they're just, they're playing those lines close. Yep, They're playing them close. And you know what? You sometimes know? they go your way. Sometimes they don't. So yeah. that was a line call. Uh, let's get to, to split step gate. Huh? Ooh. Oh, poor James, man. I feel bad for that guy. <laughs> so James Ignatowicz, is that how you say his name? Ignatowicz, yeah. Yeah, Ignatowicz. Um, so another Selkirk-sponsored player. Really nice guy. Hope to have him on the pod. Um, but uh, yeah, so I first saw this on Facebook because um, I wasn't there. And uh, yeah, saw a video of him. Uh, I don't know if he returned it. Or no, no, it was his partner dropped the ball. Uh, hit a third shot drop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So James is on the baseline. His partner hits a third shot drop. He comes in, and to me, he hits a routine tennis split step. Yep. I mean, he gets a little bit, you know, gets a little bit off the ground. Right. Um, And then there's like two or three balls that go by like dinks. Right. And then there's just like, the ref is just fault, like, fault, fault, fault. And it's actually just the funniest it's actually the funniest video because um, you can see as soon as they realize like 
the ref called a fault on a split step. I mean, Anna Lee, you can you can just see everyone, everyone, just, everyone just their throw, mind. throw their head back. Yeah. I think I think James drops to his knees. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny video. Um, yeah, so check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, so on an aggressive split step, a fault was called, and I think it was overturned. It was thankfully okay. But yes. what do you what do you think about that whole scenario? I mean, if you look at the rule book, it says like hindrance can be called for stomping. Yeah, or like stomping. any, or like any, uh, you know, non pickleball related motion, but like that's a split step. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, whether it was there, whether there was a stomp or not, it, it's not like he was stomping his feet, like he was marching. It was a split step. It was a full pickleball related move that is absolutely okay. Yeah, and I was I I uh, I commented on a post on Facebook and I was like uh, cuz there was there was a huge thread about this and yeah. um to me obviously I'm on the I'm on the camp like that's ridiculous, but right. to me uh poaching, faking, doing anything like that in the game is exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um now, the only thing I would say, yeah, I guess I mean, I guess if someone was like literally like stomping on the ground like multiple times during a point that would be kind of weird and distracting or if someone was banging their paddle on the ground right but like um like even again it's so gray area and and hopefully they they look into this but like to me i even like even like waving your paddle around or, or faking that to me that's totally fine if you're it's, gonna if you're gonna do that you got to concentrate on your shot exactly it's, but, it's legal if i if i'm where James is standing and my partner's hitting the third shot drop and I go like this. You're going to call a fault on me? No, yeah. you can't because I'm making a pickleball move, Yeah, right? I'm faking and I'm trying to, I mean, I tell my students this all the time. Add pressure if you're not getting the ball, Yeah, you know? There's ways that you can sort of scare people on the court by just making a little fake to the right or a fake to the left, you know? Like you're going to make a, a play on the ball. Yeah, you know, it, it gets in people's heads. So like, yeah. So so faking with body movements, I have no problem with. I think it's a ridiculous call. I th I'm just happy that got overturned. Obviously, audibly, like if someone's yelling or whatever, obviously that's that's a different issue. Um, yeah. But that was just. Well, and then did you see the hindrance called? That was called on on the coach of the fives, or no, I'm sorry, the owner of the fives. Oh no, I didn't. Oh my gosh! So, so I mean, it was a tight match so between did, um, between the fives and the oh, shot. Oh, I okay. And he yelled or something before he, the point was over. He yelled before the point is over. I that's a tough one. Yeah, because I know in tennis that can happen, but it's so loud in there, anyways. Uh, what's interesting? Kind of like, it's actually very similar to tennis. It, it's actually really cool. So at MLP, got the bleachers. Everyone's going crazy. Yeah. Um, 17, 14. And then and then they serve and then it goes pin drop. No, seriously, it's like yeah. quiet. I know. And you you got to expect like things to get rowdy. Like, like when there's really good gets or there's something like, oh, ah. Right. Like people... Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what I feel about someone yelling during the point. I, I I would, man, just to keep it simple and out of the gray area, I would just say, hey, concentrate until that ball lands two times. For sure. I mean, like, here's the thing is Eric's not the type of person to start something like that. That's the owner you're talking about, right? No, no, Eric, uh, Eric Lang, sorry. Oh, Eric Play, Lang. Uh, player for the shock. Oh, okay. He's not something, he's not a guy that would be upset about something like that because... I mean, I personally think Eric's a super nice guy. Oh, he's great. But I mean, in that intense of a match, I'd probably be saying the same thing. Like, oh, that guy said something. You know, like I, I'd rat him out. <laughs> you know. So was it a was it an overhead, and then the owner yelled, or what? What happened? So they had an overhead that I don't think he thought like the team was gonna get back. Oh, and he said, yeah, and he was like, yeah, yeah. and like you. <laughs> I yeah. actually saw a video of like they closed up on him, and like you could see him going. Yeah, yeah. And just like shut down for yeah. a quick second. Be like, yeah. oh, shoot, you know? But um, he screamed like right as Eric was going to dig out a ball. But Eric didn't miss that ball. Wasn't there multiple balls that went over after or no? No, 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 no. Oh, really? So he it was a scream. It, oh, it was a scream because, I mean, there was there was one get that Elise had that was just pretty stupid. I mean, she probably shouldn't have dug that out, but she did. Yeah. Okay. And... um. 
And I think when she dug that ball out, I think the owner thought that that point was going to be over. And so he kind of screamed out of excitement as she got it back. Yeah. And then he like, you could see him like stop what he was doing. And as the ball was hit back hard at Eric this time, yeah, Eric probably missed it like four or five feet wide. Wow. Okay. And just immediately looks right at the ref and is like, is this guy serious? You know? And like, I mean, it's, it's immediate excitement, you know, like I probably wouldn't be able to hold myself back if I were, yeah. if I were that, if I were that guy. But I mean, it's an interesting take for sure. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, you can see it from both sides and still be right. Right. Like as a player, I would be like, Oh man, like that was kind of, that was kind of obnoxious, you know, yeah. but as the owner, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just excited for my team. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a tough one. Um, but they did end up calling it a hindrance on that. Well, yeah. You know? And you know, I, I don't know. I could go either way. For right. That one. But, uh, yeah. So that's the MLP. That's my experience. Um, I was blown away and I think that it's a, it's really good for the sport. It was a lot of fun. It was hyped in there and, uh, yeah, it was just super exciting. So if you are a MLP rally scoring kind of hater, I suggest you go to MLP, check it out and see what you think. That's my suggestion. So anyways, let's get into desert Ridge PPA, uh, PPA desert Ridge here in, um, Phoenix, is Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Is it Phoenix? Yeah, at the Am JW Marriott. I, okay, so JW Marriott. Um, let's get into this, and uh, we're gonna just talk about kind of, um, you know, we're gonna talk about the lineups, what we got, men's doubles, women's mixed and singles pro, and we'll talk about kind of what we kind of see and our picks, maybe. Yeah. Um, some sleeper teams, uh, some teams that we just think that are solid and up and coming but uh yeah so let's what do you got uh there katie you got a list here should i pull it up yeah so go to yep you're already on it yeah so um men's pro doubles here um and this is the thing about ppa uh these tournaments are getting bigger and bigger and bigger so what yeah. we what i know is is uh there's qualifiers now um so before couple years ago even uh anyone could kind of join pay their fee and right. get into the main draw but now um there's so many teams especially on the men's men's side i think the women's side is growing definitely not as fast but uh, especially men's singles you'll see qualifiers yeah so what happens is you show up to a ppa yep you gotta wake up at seven. Oh no 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 you gotta wake up at Five at five to be there by six by six to warm up to be ready to play at seven okay so that's that's just uh that's good preparation but <laughs> you start at seven you play two or three matches and you have to basically win out you have to win two or three matches depending on to, how big the bracket to is. get in the main draw which yep. you're gonna face a top player correct and honestly um, for tennis things like that this is usually the case but I think again for pickleball that's the tough thing because you're doing it on the same day. Yep. Um, at least other sports, uh, tennis, like they do it a few days before or the week before. Right. Um, I think it may go in that direction. Maybe the challenging challenger events are before the week before stuff. But right now it's the same day. So you're playing two or three matches. You have to win them all just to get to the main draw. Then you face Ben Johns. Um, just an example. <laughs> but uh, okay. So for men's doubles, we got Ben and Colin together. Uh, Jay Delivier and um, DJ Young, uh, Riley and Matt. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Callen, Tyler, uh, Lung, um, and let's see. I'm not gonna name all of them, but just some, just some really good names here. Uh, we got um, the seniors, Dane, <laughs> the senior citizen Altoff. home. Um, no, the great guys. I love um, Dane. I love Dane. Yeah. Altoff is super cool too. They're actually. super awesome. Um, it's actually cool. It's cool to see them in the, in the main draw. Yep. Um, and, uh, J Ooh. J W and Dylan Frazier. I like that team right uh, there. I think this is a Caden sleeper pick. Connor West Gar Burroughs and Connor Garnett. Yeah. Yeah. So Connor, um garnett i'm gonna have him on the pod later today oh, so stay tuned or you probably watch it whatever um but anyways um 
exploded in the pickleball scene uh, recently, uh, yeah. especially in singles. But, uh, and he, doubles. <laughs> he made it to the, I think, semis? He made it to the semis in the last, in the Masters. Yep. Last PPA. Yep. Um, upset really, J-Dub. Really good showing. Upset a lot of people, to be yeah. honest. Um, and J-W was one of them. Yeah. Yeah, Wesley Burles, I know that he's a good player. So um, as we go down the list here, a lot of just so many good play. The men's side is just so tough nowadays. It's so deep. It's um, so freaking Tom, deep. Thomas Wilson, Julian Arnold. Good. Um, yeah. Running for, back MLP. Yeah. <laughs> Federico uh, and Pablo Tellez. Again, like you mentioned, really good yep. team. Yep. Um, yeah. So. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Alex Newman, Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Barrientos. Um, and Go down a little bit more. Cher Bear, Rob Cassidy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, Christian Alshon and Spencer Smith. Hold on, hold on, pause. And we got Craig Johnson, the the Arizona. Look out for this team, locals. So look uh, out for this team. Yeah. So Caden, you're playing with Craig. I um, am. Craig is a solid, solid player, dude. Um, he is, and a great guy. Yes. I mean, all around, just a super good guy. To play with, look at this. Hang four, out with. Four, you're you're that I'm high. You're rated that high. <laughs> four five. Wow. Okay. My four, uh five. my my uh my rating has taken a huge drop, but my duper is still good. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, these, my UTPR is is pretty ugly. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. But you know what? These these uh well these these uh, pickleball tournament ratings are so off. They're they're pretty bad, but it's okay. Um, I don't let that define me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so just quick picks here. Uh, wow, this is just a huge list. But again, no surprise. I think the finals is going to be the Johns, Matt and Riley. Um, yeah. Which way is it going to go? I'm just going to do my initial knee jerk reaction. I'm going to go to Johns. Gonna, smart. I'm going to go to I Johns guess. number yeah, as as uh, the gold. Um, Matt and Riley for silver, and for bronze, I am going to go uh, mm. <laughs> gets a little tricky yeah, there's, for bronze there's, there's huh? just so many there's just so many good teams now but you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna go uh pablo pablo and federico yeah, huh? i'm just gonna go pablo and federico okay okay i'll give you i'll give you my gold so I'll give you silver and bronze you okay, ready go, go ahead dude i'm gonna take give it to me I'm gonna take Riley and Matt. Okay, I mean, come and, on, dude. And it's fifty. I mean, not fifty-fifty chance. It's close. Yeah, it's 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 close. Okay. I wouldn't say it's fifty-fifty, but I'm gonna take Riley and Matt right. for specific reasons. Riley is playing in his hometown. Ooh, hometown, hometown hero. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. Gonna, you know what? I didn't think about that, but go ahead. I know you didn't. That's why I thought of it. <laughs> but he's gonna put his superhero cape on. He's gonna bring Matt to the promised land. Ooh. And he's gonna say, "Get on my back, I got you." Well, they've done it. They've done it multiple times before. Yeah, they. So. I mean, they've done it before, right? I mean, it's not yeah. impossible, right? And yeah. here's my thing: I love Riley. I think the dude's a stud, and I think that in his hometown, he's gonna be comfortable. He's coming back from Australia, so maybe there's there might be a little ooh, bit of rust. Ooh, I didn't. Yep, he is. There might be a little bit of rust. He is. but that is not going to stop me from making this pick. Okay, so you got John second, I assume. I will take Ben and Collins. Okay, who do you got for bronze here? For bronze, I I'm gonna. Oh, oh I forgot about J J W and Dylan. You know what? <laughs> they they have. Gosh, they've just gotten so close. I think. See what happens. I think when JW and Dylan they lose against either Matt Wright uh, and Riley, and then or the Johns, and or, then they don't yeah. get to they don't get to compete. But anyways, that there. would be a sl- I mean that would be a team I also pick for bronze. But I, again, I I picked Federico. I and Pablo. So I will let you, you change your pick if you like. No, no, I'm, I'm sticking with you're that. sticking with Pablo yeah. and Federico. Yeah, okay, you, well then so I. You got? You know, honestly, I'm I'm not kidding. It's between Julian and Thomas and. Uh, okay. And JW and Dylan for me. Okay. So I yeah, just, I just think great. Julian and Thomas yeah. are super gritty. See, I forgot about this. I think they're such gritty players. I, I looked, I, I missed. It looked I, I a little it. too quick. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. Good. Good pick. Yeah. All right. So now let's go to the women's side of the world here. Um, yeah. So women's. 
God, why do they put them so low? Women's pick here. Uh, women's pro doubles. All right. Um, and, Ooh. Okay, we got Catherine and Ali Waters. Um, Catherine okay. Toronto, Lucy and Callie. Well, Lindsay Newman, Michelle Escovo. It, Interesting. It, it looks like Anna Lee's probably going to be playing with a few different partners this year while Lee is out. Uh, yeah. No? No, well, see, the thing is, I thought Anna Lee was com fully committed to Anna Bright all year. but I, I thought that too, but obviously uh, yeah. looking at this list now, we she are might, wrong. Well, she might not be in this one. Okay. But, um, okay. Anyways, uh, we got uh, Irina, Tereshenko, Megan, the Zone. Oh, Anna Bright, Vivian David. That's yep. what we talked about. Yep. You're, that's right. Sleeper team. Sleeper that's, right that's, there. Um, that's a team I'm rooting for this weekend. Okay, we got the Brasia sisters. I love the Brasias. They're so nice. Okay, so we're going to go. Let's do our picks here um, okay. off the cuff. Uh, yep. I mean, I'll just go to Anna Lee and Catherine. <laughs> I know that's cop out. but <laughs> Old faithful. But I'll just I'll, I'll go with them. Anna Lee, Catherine Peranto. And then for silver, oh, this, this is so tough. But for silver, I'm going to go with, dude, I got it. Silver, I'm going Anna Bright, uh, Vivian David. And oh, for shit. bronze, for bronze, bro, I am going with, ooh. Pick wisely. Dude, I'm going to nail this too. I'm going <laughs> to nail this draft or this, um, Let's see it. Let's see it. I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to go, I'm going to go Lucy and Callie. Okay. That's Bronze. super valid. That's yeah. That's super okay. valid. Yeah. Uh, you go. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so when I am going to take Anna Bright and Vivian David taking the gold. Hey, I would love to see that by the way. I, I would, love would to too. That. I mean, I love Anna Lee and Catherine is super duper nice, but so, a Anna, I don't know if you know this about Anna, but she's a Hapa. Hapas are, uh, a Hapa? A Hapa is an Asian and white mixed child. I've never heard of that term before. Okay. I am a Hapa. I am not a Hapa. You are not a Hapa. But speaking of nice, you said all these players are nice. Vivian Davis, the nicest woman on tour, by the way. So that's I why would put I, that's the why I root, root pickleball for her. player yeah. on tour. Yeah. But I mean Yeah. Shout out to Vivian. Yeah. Vivian, you're great. An Anna's basically my sister because we're both Hoppas. Okay. Um so um she's my Hoppa twin. And out of her being my Hoppa twin, I'm gonna take her to get gold. Okay, gold. Who do you got for With Vivian David. Um for silver. I'm actually going to go Callie and Lucy for this oh one. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm going to take Callie and Lucy. I, I, I'm i going to be honest. I don't know what they've been on re le recently, but Dude, I think this is going to be the one where they're like, uh, okay. I think that's a bad Let's pick. get you, our together. You, gotta, you know what I mean? You got to put Anna Lee in the championship at least. So what? You're saying uh, Anna Lee saying Anna Lee and Catherine are going to get bronze. Okay. Now, now, I mean, like All I right. said, no shade. I love... I, uh, every single player I just listed there, <sighs> but, but. The people that bet against Anna Lee. I know, I know, and I feel bad I mean, about it too. I, 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 you know, I, I'd put her at least in silver if, if there's going to be up some upset. But I think that's know, valid. We'll I'm, see. I'm, Actually, the brackets. The I'm brackets going with a hot take here. I'm going with a hot take. I think I was, Callie and Lucy get silver. Very, Catherine, very hot take. Catherine um, and Anna Lee get bronze if, you yeah. know. Hot take, but yeah, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, women's yeah. pro singles. Ooh. Um, I don't even think they see. They don't even have a qualifier because there's like if you're teams. <laughs> if you are a high level five oh five five plus women's tennis player out there, move on, move over on to pickleball. Get yourself a very fun uh, and enthusiastic career. It um, wouldn't be a bad idea because it's uh it's not that it's wide open. Okay, but it kind of is wide open <laughs> um, because I'm mean, just, I'm just saying if you have that much racket experience, you could come in and you can, you can get in the mix. Okay. So uh, women's pro singles, Catherine Peranto, Anna Lee, Irina, Tereshenko, Lauren Shrapman, um, Leah, uh, Leah Jansen, yep. Mary, Brasia, Georgia Johnson, a lot of good names here. Megan is playing singles. Yes, she is. Lena. Um, I don't know how to say her name. Who? Lena. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a long one. Yeah, I'm not going to attempt that. <laughs> Sorry, Lena. Okay, so my picks. 
Okay, I'm gonna go for a big hot take of risk, okay? And Aaliyah Waters. No way. Are you yeah. serious? That's yeah. a great, wow. You pick Annalie Waters for gold, huh? Yep. So Annalie for gold. Um, That's a hot take. Silver and bronze. We're going to go. Uh, mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm just going to mix it up. I mean, not mix it up, but uh, I, I would normally go um, Annalie, Catherine, and then, gosh, Leia. I'll go. Uh, Anna Lee, Leia, Catherine. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I, mm. the sleeper for me is Mary Brush. Yeah. 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 That's where I was going to go with that. I honestly, I mean, if I had to go, okay. So who's getting gold? This one actually will surprise you. I'm going to say Anna Lee Waters. Okay. Yeah. That, that's uh, very surprising. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, for silver, Let's go I'm going to go Leia Jansen. All right. Silver lining Leia. Yep. For bronze, I was going to go Mary Brasha. Okay. Hey, I would not disagree with you. On I, I think Mary Brasha has got a lot of good tricks up her sleeves. Yeah. Um, and then the men's pro singles, you know what? The singles is not posted here, but uh, I'm just got to go with Ben, uh, you I'm, know. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm pretty sure I signed up for this tournament, and I didn't see my name in the qualifier. So you're probably in the main. So it's possible that i'm in the main main draw i could also just not be in the tournament but yeah. we will never know <laughs> watch out kaden's gonna be playing a top five seed in the first round yay so uh okay so i would say ben and um man. don't forget tyson's out this weekend oh yeah tyson okay. tyson is not playing this tournament mm. due to the angle injury that he that he got at mlp you know what um haven't seen j-dub he's been you know, I don't think he's meddled the past one or two. I'm going to go. Mm, it's just tough. There's so many good players. Oh, That's there's fair. Federico. Oh, Federico was in the final at the PPA Masters. Yeah, so I'm going to go Ben Johns, uh, Federico, and then I'm going to go Julian Arnold for bronze. I actually like that list a lot. Okay, hot take. Go I ahead. I like that list a lot. I'm going to go... Ben Johns. You better say Ben Johns. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to take myself for gold. <laughs> no. I mean, hey, that'd be awesome. Uh, I'd love to play well this week, honestly. Um, I probably will see Ben Johns in the first round. Or uh, or in passing. In the, or actually, just... no, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be seeing Ben because he would be getting someone from the qualifier. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I will probably have a guy like... Who's a PPA sound no, Dylan not Fraser. even Dylan. I don't think I would. Well, it's possible. Yeah. I've played Dylan though, and I've played him well. But Dylan's good. Yeah, dude, Dylan's gotten freaking better. Yeah, Dylan's gotten better that at guy, singles, dude. I I can say this because I'm close enough with him. That guy's got the ugliest two hand backhand I've ever <laughs> seen, and yet it works. It works. It's it's gotten it's, it's gotten, gotten better. better. It's gotten better. You know. Okay. He looks like he's swinging for the fences out there, and yeah. you know, hits his target every now and then. But All he right. he does really good. Um, uh, my okay. So you got Ben and I got Ben Silver and Bronze. I got Ben Dylan Frazier too. I like it. Yeah. Team Selkirk. Yeah. And who you got three? I'm gonna take I'll, I'll go Federico okay. three, I we'll guess. Go Federico. I'll go Federico. Guy's All a right. stud. So B Johns, we got uh um, who did you say Dylan Fraser and Federica? All right. Well, we'll see. We'll recap that and see. Um, last thing that we could talk about is maybe the PPA and versus APP. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, now two different tours, if you don't know, um, they've been battling it out, you know, the past, uh, I don't know, a couple of years, past few years. Yeah. PPA is obviously, I don't, I hate to say premier. But yeah, all the players have signed with PPA that are the best. Um, with a select few, um, and APP, um, you know, I, I don't know, I kind of see it almost similar as the MLP and the Premier and Challenger. Um, yeah, right, kind of turned into that. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, the biggest thing that I noticed is. There were a lot of good pros still playing the APP who weren't fully committing to the PPA. Yeah, no, for sure. Until 
MLP and PPA merged. Yeah. Once they merged, everyone was like, well, shoot. Now now we got to do something. Yeah. And I think the PPA also knew, hey, we got to do something. Yeah, for sure. You know? So I think the PPA is in a good position with power, with players, with money. I think they're in a little bit better of a spot in that arena. But I think the APP is also a super quality tour. Yeah. You know, like, honestly, if you asked me if I was if I was an amateur pickleball player playing 4.0, I would much rather go play the APP than I would the PPA. Well, there's some uh, there's been some, uh, you know, controversies out there about uh, not being the best experiences at PPA events. Right. So. Well, I can't. Be, com- I can't confirm. Um, I'm going to be honest. They put. Uh, they put the 5.0 uh, events on uh, tape lines. <laughs> I've. I've. I've seen it. I've okay. seen it. You know. Well, I look uh, over and I'm like, oh wait, those are, those are my yeah. buddies who are you know playing in the 5.0 and yeah. they're on a tape line and a temp net with a, <sighs> with this much room. I'll tell you what. I have not played on a temp net, for a long time. The first, one time I did. I think it was like. Uh, a few months ago, and I was like, "Wow, we have we've gotten so spoiled." Where was that? Uh, I don't know. I think it, it was somewhere. I was just out of court, but again, uh, it's just so crazy to see this game evolve and grow. Because when I started, um, it was all temp. Nets. It was all temporary <laughs> nets, uh, all taped lines. Yep. Then we got painted lines, which was huge upgrade. Upgrade, Tesla, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, and now. Um, yeah, it's like if we, uh, see even, you know, tape lines or temporary nets, I would like, ew, what is that? I'm would, not playing there. I wouldn't even go. <laughs> so, uh, no, but definitely gotten spoiled and it just shows you kind of how much this, how far along this game has come. Yeah. Um, the I, Bay area still needs work though. They still need more courts. All right. So anybody who's in the Bay area start spreading that because we need way more courts in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, not not. I don't think there's a lot of space out there, but there's not. There's yeah. in fact there's no space. But we need to create space for okay. pickleball courts in San Francisco. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, now, uh, yeah. Anything else uh, you got? No, I mean, um, if you guys are ever in the Arizona area, feel free to uh, reach out and uh, come by Legacy Sports or Bell Bank Park. Um, we do have 41 pickleball courts, and they all are perfect okay 41 courts uh all real lines real lines real nets dedicated real fences around every single court so you will not have to deal with ball on or anything like that because let's be real here it's all happened to us where we have an easy overhead and a big point and uh, a ball rolls onto your court and the point gets stopped not good so it's much safer there um yeah yeah but anything uh any topics anything else that you um think about no i uh honestly i i would love to talk about how bad the niners were this last uh weekend but uh, i'm too heartbroken uh to even talk about that so all right we'll, we'll, keep, it we'll keep it pickleball related we'll keep it pickleball related uh too bad for the niners but uh yeah thanks for joining us on our official um brionis pickleball podcast zero zero one um and uh make sure to follow us um and keep up to date we will be coming out with a new episode hopefully every single week at least uh till the summer and we'll have to figure that out but uh i hope you have ac in here for the summer yeah um from the chandler arizona studio shout out to uh my sponsor selkirk um and other sponsors that are coming soon uh, just email us if that, <laughs> if that can be you. But uh, yeah, again, thanks so much for joining us and we will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned. Let's go.